Welcome to the Heart of a Viking. These art lessons are taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape Henlopen School District in Delaware. I hope you have fun, create imaginative works of art, and make sure you share them with someone because, after all, the visual arts are meant to be seen. Hey Cape Artists, welcome back to the Heart of a Viking. In our episodes this whole week, we're talking about food and art. And today is no exception. Today we're actually making some dessert origami. Oh my gosh, how exciting. So in our origami today, we're just gonna be needing some square pieces of paper, mostly your fingers, and then maybe some crayons or colored pencils or markers, something where you can add some details with it once you're all done folding. So make sure you have some patience. Sometimes origami can be a little tricky. Don't be afraid to call in an art assistant if you need it. And let's learn a little bit about desserts before we begin our dessert origami art for today. A dessert is a type of food that is eaten after lunch or dinner. It's usually a sweet food, like ice cream, cookies, and cake. In some countries, cheese, such as brie cheese and fruit, are served as dessert instead. Some desserts are decorated like birthday cakes. Many desserts are baked, and some desserts are served with whipped cream as topping. The Pilgrim Fathers and early settlers brought their pie recipes with them to America, adapting to the ingredients and techniques available to them in the New World. Their first pies were based on berries and fruits that were pointed out to them by the Native American people. Over the years, pie has evolved to become what is the most traditional American dessert. Pie has become so much a part of American culture throughout the years that the saying, as American as apple pie, is now commonly used. Every year, National Dessert Day is celebrated on the 14th of October in the United States. It's a day when people savor the desserts of their choice to satisfy their sweet tooth. You can also try and bake your own favorite desserts and share some with your friends and family to make the most of this special day. So let's celebrate Dessert Day today by making some dessert origami. Let's start with an ice cream cone and a cupcake. Just remember though, with any type of origami, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, first is you always start with a square piece of paper. Um, second, you wanna make sure that when we're making our folds, you really press them flat, either with a fingernail or drag a marker or a pencil across them so they become very, very flat. And finally, art assistants are often necessary. So it is okay to ask for help. It is definitely okay if you get confused and need to rewind the directions and review the steps and try it a second time or a third time. Definitely do whatever you need to do to be successful. All right, so let's see what we need to get started. Hey, Bardis, how excited are you to begin our dessert origami? All right, so we're gonna be needing some scissors today. We'll be needing either glue stick or tape, whichever you prefer. We'll be needing some markers and maybe some crayons too. I'm gonna use a little bit of crayons later. And then we'll need a couple pieces of paper that are cut to be a perfect square. So if you want to grab a roller and just double check, you can. Otherwise, just know that you have a perfectly square piece of paper. So mine is measuring eight and a half inches across and it's measuring eight and a half inches down, which makes it a perfect square. And that's what you need too. The color of your paper truly doesn't matter. You can always add details later with colors. Um, so I'm gonna start with my white one. And I'm going to start my ice cream origami by folding in my paper in half from the left side to the right side and I'm folding it really super flat and making sure I line up those edges. Then I'll open it and fold the bottom to the top. And reopen that one as well. Now I'm actually going to use my scissors to cut straight up the center. I'm going to end up with two rectangle papers, one for now and one for later, save it. Okay, so now I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to color one side of it brown. Since this is going to be my ice cream cone, I want it to be brown on one side, which will eventually be the brown of the ice cream cone itself. So I'm using a crayon that doesn't have a wrapper and just sort of rubbing it across to make a brown side to my paper. 
Okay, so now I'm going to fold the left long side over to the right side, just like this. Make sure that crease is nice and flat. Now from before, there should be a fold going across the center. You're going to bring down the top of your ice cream cone origami paper and line it up with that fold that's going across the center. It'll reveal the white side. Perfect. Now flip the whole thing over and now we should be looking at the total white side. And now I'm going to do a little bit of a tricky fold. I'm taking the bottom left side and folding it up to the middle, just like this. Now I'll repeat the same thing on the right side, bottom right side up to the middle as well. There. Now, a little bit tricky again. I'm repeating the same style of fold, but it doesn't have to go all the way to the center. This is actually a really long fold, so take your time and sort of pull and gently push the fold where you want it to be. It's going to be a diagonal line that goes from that bottom point all the way up to the horizontal fold that was going across the center that we used a few minutes ago. You can kind of see it on my paper here. And of course, I'll repeat the same thing on the right side. Excellent. So now I'm going to dog ear the two corners at the top. These do not have to be precise. It's just a little fold in on the right side and the left side. As long as they're kind of similar to each other, it really doesn't matter how much or how little you fold in. And fold those nice and flat. Excellent. So now I'm going to flip it over and I have my ice cream cone. I can see it already. The vanilla ice cream at the top and the cone at the bottom. So I'm going to use my marker that I have, my brown marker, and make some lines to make this look more like a waffly style of cone. And next, I'm going to add some details to the ice cream scoop. You could color it a color, depending on what flavor of ice cream you want this to be. I'm simply going to leave it vanilla because I remembered from our lesson on Monday, project one of Food Week, that the America's favorite flavor was vanilla. So I'm gonna leave mine vanilla, but I am going to add some rainbow sprinkles. We had a lesson not too long ago either where we learned the colors of the rainbow in order. I wonder if you remembered them. Remember, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So I'm going to use all those same colors for my rainbow sprinkles. Now before you call it quits on your ice cream cone, don't forget we had cut this paper in half to begin with. So you actually have another piece of paper that's already ready to go to make a second ice cream cone. So if you want to rewind the video and do the steps again, you definitely could. You actually have another piece that's ready to go. All right, so now we're moving on to cupcake origami. So uh, we started with a square piece of paper, as you recall. However, look at the shape that I moved mine to now. Instead of keeping it as a square, I've shifted it to be a rhombus. That's right. So for this project, it starts as a rhombus. All right, once you have your paper laying in front of you like a rhombus, we're going to fold the bottom corner up to the top corner, magically changing our rhombus to a triangle. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure those edges are really super flat. If your fingernails aren't long, you can always use a pencil to roll across to make it nice and flat or a marker. Okay, so now I'm going to take that bottom edge, bring it diagonally up and make sure it lines up with the whole right side. So it's kind of a funny fold. It takes a little adjusting, especially down there at that bottom corner. But once you get it, line up those edges and push it down nice and flat. Now this is one of those times that after I fold it, I'm going to open it back up so that I can see the crease that I made. There it is, perfect. That'll be handy in a few minutes. Now I'm going to take that bottom right corner and I'm going to line it up with the end of that crease I just finished making, just like that, and push this down. That one's staying closed, you don't have to open it back up. Now, repeating again, bottom left corner this time, over to right at that edge. Yep, right like that. And then push that down, and again, that one's staying closed, don't open that one back up.
Okay, now we're going to fold that bottom edge just a little bit up. It doesn't have to be any particular length, just fold it up a little bit. Perfect. Now flip the whole thing over. This is the front of your cupcake. Okay, so now at the top, there are two layers of paper. Take just the first one and fold it down as far as you can without ripping it, of course. Fold it nice and flat. That fold's going to stay there. Now I'm going to lift up that little corner and bring it up to that top edge I just made, just like that. Now I'm going to take the bottom edge, the current bottom edge, up to right where the point just went. There we go. And then if I can, I'm going to do that once more. I hope you can. It's a really small fold, but I, it does make it better if you can get that little extra fold in there. Excellent. Now push that all down really nice and flat. However, then I do want you to open those all up gently. We still want to be able to see those creases, but we are going to open that up. There we go. And now we're going to be folding it accordion style. So that means I'm starting at the top and I'm folding the first fold forward, then the second fold backwards, and then forward, then backwards, and forward, then backwards. And it's going to stack on top of each other, creating this really cool little hill or platform looking fold. It looks awesome. Perfect. Okay, now I'm actually going to flip this whole thing over and add a little bit of glue wherever anything is sort of picking up. So that little corner there, I'm going to put a little bit of glue under there. You could use tape instead if you have tape instead of glue stick. And then down at the bottom, you can see that little rectangle. Yep, right there. I put a little glue under that. And I'm definitely going to hold these for a few moments until they stick. Okay, so now I'm going to take that last triangle that's at the top and I'm going to fold it just like I folded the front one, but only the first part. So at the beginning, I just folded the triangle down, folded the point up to the center, and then the, the new bottom edge up to the center, and then that one last little teeny tiny fold, really thin, up to the center as well. Now for this one, once I get everything all folded in and I press it flat with my nails, I'm going to unfold it just like before, but I'm not going to do the accordion fold step. I'm simply going to just kind of push it sort of flat, but also not flat, just so it looks like layers of icing on top of your cupcake. Just like that, fantastic. And now using whatever kind of supplies you want, you can add some sprinkles or icing or designs and decorations to your cupcake. So as you watch, you're going to see me make a cherry for on top of my cupcake icing. I'm using a scrap piece of white paper I just happen to have beside me and making my cherry perfect. I'm also going to add some sprinkles to the icing and I'm going to add some um, diagonal line pattern to the cupcake liner at the bottom. Cape artists, how cool are these? Dessert origami, that's my favorite, I love it. So I hope you had a great time. I hope you were able to fold your origami and create some fantastic designs. Um, and I cannot wait to see them when you post them on Art Sonia for me. So I can't wait to see you next time here at the Heart of a Viking. HOB artists, don't forget to hop on over to Art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio. I can't wait to see it.